どうぞ Express myself properly. Express myself properly. Thank you, Horitomo. <laughs> okay, so、um, Horitomo is going to speak in Japanese and then I'll translate.、Uh, we do apologize for the muffled voices with the masks, but as you're aware, we are in the middle of a global pandemic. So、um, please bear with us. And there will be a QA at the end as well. And、um, as soon as we get Tactical stuff figured out, we'll, we'll ready to go. Do, do so,、um, he's introducing himself. He was born in、uh, 1971, he's 48 years old. Um, in 1993, when he was 21,、uh, he began tattooing in Nagoya, Japan. So he、uh, began tattooing at a studio、um, from a Japanese national who'd actually studied overseas, and、um, he had like a Like、more of a Western style shop, which was pretty,、uh, you know, like a little bit un, it was a bit rare at that time and,、uh, you know, pretty exciting. So after that, he、uh, worked for a while in Tokyo and Osaka as well and continued to,、uh, you know, continue his pursuit of tattooing. In 2011, he moved to Yokohama and、uh, began studying under a Japanese tattoo master. And、um, it was at this point that he essentially devoted his life to studying the traditional Japanese tattoo. Is that this? In 2007,、um, he got a visa to come work in the United States.、Uh, he moved to San Jose to work at State of Grace and、um, continues to work there to this day. So that's his basic, his, his quick story. <laughs> and、uh, so he's going to start his presentation now. So, what he's going to begin with is a very, very brief、uh, summary of Japanese tattoo history. So,、um, the evidence of tattooing in Japan goes back to the Jomon period, which is approximately 13,000 years to approximately 2,500 years ago. So, let's say basically what he's talking about right now is probably from about 10,000 years ago. So, 
So there's like earthenware figures like this one that you see in the, um, up here on the screen. And it's, it's widely uh, thought that all these designs represent tattoos. So these are like different um, figure earthenware uh, masks and whatnot. And it, it depicts designs on the face. And um, once again, most scholars agree that these are like meant to represent tattoos. So this is um, about 3000 uh, before common era. So about 5,000 years ago. So there's um documentation in Chinese literature uh, when they visited Japan, um, and this is also a uh, BCE 3000, um, that all the men were tattooed on their faces. And it's widely thought that these were all like amuletic or a protective type talisman tattooing. So there's a period of time following that where most tattooing Japan was um, in the north with the Ainu people and then in the south in Okinawa, but for a period of time tattooing in the central area of Japan seems to have like disappeared for a while. So the point when Japanese tattooing became popular again um, was during the Edo period, and that's uh, 1603 to 1868. <laughs> Um, some of the first documented tattoos were mostly around people that were like gamblers or like roughneck, a little bit fringe society types. Um, and it was said that they were getting stuff like, um, like lines from sutras and like things like that tattooed on them. So amongst courtesans at that time period, also um, people were getting love dots. There'd be dots that would like represent something about like their favorite client or lover, um, also names as well. So that was happening back then. So this woodblock print, you can actually see their tattoo and aim on her. Um, if you look right over there. So around the middle of the Edo period, um, they started, the government started using, and this is where the term Irizumi comes from, but they started using tattoos to mark uh, convicted uh, felons, criminals, that type of thing. So as many of you may know, um, like tattoos are looked down upon in Japan and that image that they're scary or bad or negative, um, and this is really where that originated from. So this diagram shows um, a lot of the different, some of the different punishment marks from the Edo period. Mm. 
So I guess like the, like you see those stripes, like that was a very common one. So this Irazumi punishment process was extremely brutal. Um, it's not the uh, nice, pleasant procedures we have now. Um, what they generally do is like write, you know, with a, a sumi and brush, they'd write out the mark or whatever they're going to do. And they take about 10 needles together and just jab. And then they take the more ink and then rub it in until it's soaked in there. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, this is here's a, yeah, and here's a depiction of the process. So for um, certain crimes, they would actually go to the forehead and like, so this is the start of one. So this is, this example is for like a first offense. And so, I mean, those of you that know Chinese or Japanese, it'll be the one, but so that's one line that way. So, so you can see now that the, here comes a second mark for the second offense. Can anyone read this character? Okay, so on the third offense, the third strike, I guess, um, they do this, the third stroke and then add the, 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 the dot brush there, which uh, in Chinese or Japanese reads as dog. So clearly, like, I mean, they wanted to mark this person um, and also make it extremely hard to cover up and the, the person was to be seen as less than human. There's actually a, I can't remember which Kurosawa film, but there's one where the guy has, wears a headband because he's hiding his punishment mark. Um. So just to give an idea um, of what you would do to get something like this, um, in the Edo period, like let's say you stole the equivalent of $10,000 today, you would be put to death. So something like this would be for a much smaller amount of money that they would do this to you. So the Edo period, aside from the time when this barbaric practice was happening, was also the time when the decorative practice of Japanese tattooing really began. And um, so the, the real transition would be from what um, what the Japanese call the one point tattoo is like a, you know, which literally means like a one point tattoo, like a small, um, as opposed to like large scale body type tattooing. And, um, you know, Horitomo is very confident in saying like that's, you know, that time period is the origin of what we now consider to be the Japanese tattoo. So, 
小説を日本語に訳した本が出版されまして、その本のイラストレーションとか、そのストーリーに登場するヒーローとか、悪魔が書いた浮世絵が、浮世絵とかヒーローに書いた浮世絵がすごい大人気。So,、um, Horitomo feels that one of the big reasons for the tattoo boom that happened in the Edo period was、um, there's a translation of a, a Chinese novel,、um, The 108 Heroes of the Water Margin, into Japanese. And accompanying, when that tr- was translated,、um, you know, pretty much every major Japanese artist illustrated it. And they did these dynamic tattoos on them, and,、um, you know, like as, as seen in the, the slide here. <laughs> Yeah, so you know, within the Suikoden illustrations,、um, you know, these are by Kuniyoshi, but it's like all the heroes and the, these tough warriors, they'd had like these large scale tattoos. So these, uh, these uh, were by Kuniyoshi,、um, and, you know, and I'm sure as many as you know, like, he had a huge influence on the Japanese tattoo world from then until now. But he definitely, like, you know, I, I think, kind of defined what Japanese tattooing was going to be. And I mean, the strength of his design shows because even to this day, like his designs are very, used by artists now for, for tattoo reference. And I myself am extremely influenced by Kuniyoshi. Another point、um, Kuniyoshi loved cats, and he also like, he painted a lot of cats, so there's a lot of woodblock prints of cats by Kuniyoshi. Yeah, So, you know, and Horitomo said all of this is very, has influenced him a lot. And, to, you know, in point, like two of the pieces in here are actually painted as homages to Kuniyoshi. So, so here's the one by Kuniyoshi. Yeah, war, the warrior defeating the snake. Yeah. <laughs> so, here's you know, his homage to Kuniyoshi, one of them. This is a very famous Kuniyoshi、uh, woodblock print. And so, kind of going, you know, as a homage to that, he painted this one. So, obviously,、um, you know, Horitomo is you know, a, a Japanese tattooer, so he gets a lot of influence from other tattooers, from painters and artists, but he definitely feels that there's something special about Kuniyoshi and he, he has a kind of a special place in his heart for him. Okay. So that was like kind of his real basic Japanese tattoo history talk. And so now we're going to move on to the next topic. 
So now he's going to speak a bit about the traditional style uh, tibori, uh, the traditional style of Japanese tattooing by hand. So he's going to talk a bit about like the differences um, in appearance between uh, hand tattooing versus machine tattooing and then different techniques. And, um, So very simply to define tibori, which in Japanese just is literally hand tattooing. Um, you know, obviously you don't use a machine and it's needles that are in some way attached to a, a stick, which you control by hand and then insert into the skin. So obviously, um, all tattooing in Japan up till a certain time period was done by Tabori by hand. Um, but once the machine uh, from the West was introduced, the electric machine, um, it became very common and popular. So there's um there are, to this day there are a lot of tattooers that use tattoo machines in Japan. So there's essentially three uh, ways to tattoo or three groups of people. There'll be people that tattoo entirely by machine people that tattoo entirely by hand, and then people that do both, and kind of like maybe do a, a mixture of the two. And as far as Horitomo goes, he outlines by machine, and uh, shades by hand, by Tebori. And of course, um, uh, you know, this is also, he'll, he will take into account a client's wishes. So if a client wants to be tattooed entirely by machine, he'll do that. So he's going to talk a bit about like the differences um, between Tabori machine tattooing and how it looks and then the pros and cons of both. So it's often said um, about Tabori work that like the, the saturation and like the depth and vibrancy is really good and um, Horitomo believes that that's true. And it's especially like with colors like yellow and white, um, and you can really see a difference between Tabori work versus machine work. So a lot of times with um, like certain colors, especially with machine, like, you know, like 10 years later, the color might fall out, but he feels that with Tabori, it's just, it's really in there. And like the, the chances of that happening are a lot less. So, like, you know, the, the basic construction of Japanese tattooing, you have a main image, whether it's a dragon or a tiger or a warrior, and that's surrounded by a background made up of, like, waves or clouds or rocks, which is largely black and gray. Oh, 
And he feels that because with Japanese tattooing, there's such a large amount of background and the density of it. Um, when it's done by Tabori, you can really see the rhythm in the finished product and like, kind of see the difference. So this piece right here, um, all the outlines are by uh, machine and then all the color and um, everything else is by Tabori. And this one is entirely by machine. It's, it's, he feels that it's harder to see in the photo, but in person you can really see the difference. So on this one, um, all the colors are by Tabori, and then the, the black and gray is by uh, machine. So this one, uh, the, the color is by Tabori, everything else is by machine. And this is entirely by machine. And these are um, outlined with machine and then everything else is Tabori. I mean, it might be kind of hard to see uh, in these photos, but he really feels like if you look at it in person and compare, you can see the difference. And of course, like with anything, um, there's good points about Tabori, but there also are negative uh, aspects to it. And um, overall, like, uh, you know, for the most part, Tabori is a lot slower than machine. I mean, there are some spots on the body like where, you know, it's like really easy to pack uh, color in, um, you know, so certain fleshy areas and he feels like in those places, like you could potentially tattoo Tabori just as fast as a machine. So this client is actually from Europe, uh, from Switzerland, I believe. And um, so he was always on a time schedule when he would come get tattooed. So the only Tabori on this tattoo is the white and the yellow. So for him, it's important like that he, you know, he has a discussion with every client and then sort of figures out what's going to work best for them. And he thinks another negative aspect would be, for example, like uh, portraiture or fine line work, Tabori is just not suited for.
やっぱりマシンの方がもうちょっと正確に今は仕事とか、デリケートファイルの仕事の機械の方もできると思う。Of course, there are, gonna, there, there are tattooers that can do very detailed work by Tabori, but in Hilary Tomo's case, he really feels that for anything detailed or fine line, he'd prefer to use a machine. So, it's also、um, with Tabori outlines, it's a lot more common for the ink to spread, or you know, as, as we say in, in America, like blow out.、Um, so, the line work just isn't as clean. Yeah. But that said,、um, you know, there's a lot of different types of tattooing and a lot of different people. Like, there's, a, there's definitely it's like a handcrafted look to Tibori outlines, which,、um, you know, there's a certain group of people that really they'll seek that out. They like that. And Horitomo actually really appreciates that style of work as well. And you know, he also knows, even amongst like a lot of the well known tattooers in Japan, there are tattooers that will actually outline by Tabori to get that old school look and then actually shade the machine. But、one of the things, like if somebody who's not like、uh, acquainted with Tabori looks at something like that, they might think that, oh, this person just does poor line work. When in fact, it's, it's not that, it's just a different type of line work. So, considering all this, Horitomo, you know, he outlines by machine. There are a few things like, like sometimes, like that, the thick outline of the rock, he'll do that to Bori, but for the most part, he outlines by machine. So, something like, you know, like this a one point tattoo, like this one, one cat, you know, for the most part, he does these by machine. And he also feels like a lot of these like smaller one points, aside from the, 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 the size of the needle that you have to use, but also just a, a, a tattoo of this size, it's also it's hard to see the difference. So, you know, there's less reasons to use Tabori. But there's, you know, there are people that they'd rather get the Tabori even if it takes longer or whatever. So, some people want that experience. Okay, he's going to start talking about Japanese tattoo tools and equipment. So,、um, what's starting with the ink and sumi ink? So, most of the, a, a large part of Japanese tattooing is a lot of black and gray tones.、Um, as far as sumi goes, what it is, it's, it's a burn off of canola oil, and the soot that comes from that is compressed, and then they, they get these blocks. And that's like a, that's what we call a sumi stick. Look at this. 
Dito sto. Non mi vedo. Dito che se mi succede che mi chiedo di non stare a morire. So, um, you know, what you do is you take this block of sumi uh, and like you see the sumi stone up there, uh, ink stone, if you will, and then um, mixing with water, you'll grind that and then create like the liquid sumi. I'm sure you've probably seen this for painting and whatnot, um, but you'll, you know, you'll grind that to your, to the desired consistency that you want. And of course, you know, he does use modern inks as well. I mean, it might be very minor differences, but he does feel that like, like the, the, the sumi, which you have to grind it every day because it, 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 you know, it doesn't have like the alcohol and the glycerin in it. So it's not going to keep, but um, like he really feels like the black tones and gray tones are really nice. But then, and when it comes to coloring, he just uses, you know, like the modern tattoo inks. Okay, so these are some Tabori tools. So the traditional Tabori um, uh, apparatus would essentially be you'd configure your needles, whether it's for outlining or shading. Um, and then you would uh, attach it to the end of maybe a bamboo or a wooden rod or stick, um, often using silk thread or rice glue. So, and then, you know, so in, in this little diagram, he's kind of showing like the differences between like the traditional method and then the more modern uh, method with modern uh, sterilization and sanitation procedures. So essentially the, the bamboo and the wood has been replaced with stainless steel, which is easier to clean. And then rather than thread or glue, they're using um, so, uh, solder, something you can run through an autoclave. So he kind of, it's essentially now become like a two piece apparatus. Um, you know, the, the needle cartridge part you would have whatever type of configuration you need for what you're going to do. And then that can like stick on to the handle. And then that way, as you can see, it comes out of an autoclave bag, um, you know, so we can autoclave the actual needle. And then this is very easy to clean. And so the, this, this stick or handle part is called a nomi or a sashibo. Um, and fun fact, sashi bowl literally means uh, stab stick. So it's kind of like a shank. <laughs> so for when he's working with maybe like um, six needles or a smaller grouping or a small area, then that the one this one is about that's about the length of the uh, the nomi that he uses. So the next one, um, this is what he'd use for maybe like 30 to 36 needles. 
一番、あの、針42本、40本以上の針を使っているんですが、まあ、あと座ってる時には、ちょっとあの、こういう位置がちょっと、ちょっとさ、今、長い。So, this one, like when he's using, like, say, 46 needles,、um, his larger configurations. Also, because, you know, you work on different parts of the body. So, if he's sitting somewhere and the tattoo area is a little further, he might use the longer one for extra reach. So, for him, I think he thinks that the, the kind of the basic average proper size, maybe around 18 inches, will work for most tattooing in Japan. So, he did see、um, about 18 years ago, there was actually a, a magazine about a tattoo that were using a one meter nomi, <laughs> kind of like this. Yeah. But, but he feels that this is, was more of like a sort of a performative thing to get more clients and attention because it just doesn't seem very, you know, like, um, Because even with, if you look at like the, the Thailand style, the, the Sakyan, they, they do use a longer stick, but it's like this. It's not here that they can still, you know.、So. But, you know, a lot of tattooers are, they're, they're, they're those kind of people.、So. So, these are specific techniques of Tabori. So, he's going to、um, start by explaining the top one labeled Tabori,、uh, the most prevalent method. So, this is the most, probably the most popular way you'll see of Tabori being done. So, for the purposes of this, Horitoma is right handed. So, for a right handed person, essentially your left hand goes onto the skin as your stretch hand, it stretches the skin.、Um, your thumb will be the fulcrum point where the end of the nomi、uh, rests,、uh, the needles go there. And then that's where like, the, the, you get that leverage, and that's where you'll be pushing that in. This, so, this style is like, it's the most like, basic, the most well used,、uh, well known. Probably most tattooers do this.、Um, So, there's a style called Shamisen Bori. It's a lot more rare and a bit unusual, but、um, essentially, you're holding the nomi like a pencil.、Um, and so, you're putting one hand down and you're, not, you're, you're holding the other one like this. And the name comes from、uh, the shamisen as a traditional Japanese instrument, which I, I mean, I guess in、uh, your Closest equivalent in Western society would be like maybe a guitar or a banjo. It's a longer instrument,、um, but instead of a small pick, it uses like a larger pick about that size. So when you're doing it, like it, you know, the motion like that is kind of similar to if you're holding the.、Oh, oh, sorry. Yes, so the. the 
So that's uh, if that's he's mimicking the motion that from where the name comes from. And he's actually going to discuss later or explain later why he personally doesn't use this style. Okay. Also, with the original, the first Tabori thing, um, there are times when he holds the nomi like this and still uses the sum as the fulcrum point, but most of the time he's going this way, where his index finger is stabilizing and guiding the nomi. So this is a, uh, he's going to go over the, the Imozuki technique of tattooing. So simply put, like in the illustration, Imozuki is when you just dip it in ink and you just push in and out, in and out, like, you know, very uh, repetitively. So, and then to, to break down the word, emo means potato, and um, zuki is to, 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 to push. So the kind of the whole potato reference, um, because this is like a style that's like, uh, it's, it's essentially considered a very basic style of Tabori. Um, there's a style called Hanebari that he's going to go over next that, or later that um, essentially like the beginner wouldn't have, wouldn't be able to do Hanebari. So the whole idea with like potato, which I think I've heard this in English as well, but the, in Japanese, the reference is more of like somebody who's not quite so skilled, maybe kind of a bumpkin, maybe clumsy, a little like that sort of thing. Um, so it's, it's kind of like, it, it's almost, it's, I don't know if I'd say it was an insult, but it's like maybe mocking the beginner a little bit. And if, if this is the only technique you know, then you actually can't get f full saturation with Tabori. Um, the only times where Yutomo uses Imozuki is for like really soft black and gray shading um, or if he's covering over like scar tissue. So Hanebari is when the needle goes in at that same angle, but then as it's being retracted, it flicks up. Um, those of you that have seen Tabori or heard it, you'll probably hear that sound of the needles catching the skin or even see it lift the skin. And that's what this is. It's like a, like a flicking kind of motion. Yeah, and hane means essentially the flick and body means needle. So it's a needle flick is, is the actual root of the word. And Horitomo really feels that like uh, the best parts of Tibori meaning like that saturation and that like that good look is because of this style. Yeah. 
So what Hori Tom is illustrating with his fingers is essentially like, so the needle with the ink goes in and then as it's flicking, it's kind of like essentially depositing and scraping off all the ink, like leaving all that ink in there. So that, that com combined motion is really what makes that like rich saturated tone. And it, it, Horitomo really feels that it's because of this technique that you can actually saturate an area better with Tabori with less strokes than what it would take with the machine because of the, the flicking motion. So he's like, you know, going and it's like kind of like in and then sort of like twisting it, depositing the ink and keep doing that. That's how it gets it. So in areas, he has to do a much a smaller motion. Um, let's say like the collarbone, uh, the ditch behind the knee on certain joints, um, areas that require little care. Those ones will kind of do a, a smaller flicking motion. And so then there's times when, when he's using 30 or more needles, or if it's an area where, you know, like he can really kind of like push harder on the skin, like he'll do a much larger motion. Yeah. And, um, you know, obviously like, like with all tattooing, you have to take into account like the thickness and the, the strength of the skin and, and each particular client. And that's how he'll adjust the motion of his Hyundai body. So the, the, the verb for tattooing, horu, um, also means to carve in Japanese. And so like, and if you look at this, like the, the motion of hanebari and then the, the motion of carving are the same. Okay. So the reason why um, the aforementioned, when he talked about shamisen bori, the reason why he doesn't use it is um, because essentially you're holding the nomi like a pencil. So when you go like this, there's like a lot less power that you can apply to it. So he's saying like, especially if you're using more than 30 needles, it's extremely difficult to get that in the skin with just this much motion. So you can see with the more traditional Tabori method, when you're going like this, you're, the power is generating from your whole shoulder and you're using your whole arm to push that ink in. Thank you. 
点数って高速的には、まあ、時には四十分以上の針を使うんですけど、ここには、あの、三千本の。はい、よりこっちの。こっちの、ここなの方が。So, you know, there's a lot of times with large fields, so he's using over 40 needles. So, in which case, he just he really needs his whole arm to push that. Yeah. And he also wants to make it clear he's not talking down on how anyone else works. You know, everyone can do it. Just for him, these are the things he's found that work for him. Yeah, he also does feel that there's, there, you know, there's a lot of beautiful work coming from people that use Shamisen Bori, but he also it, it kind of has a little bit of that rougher handmade, handcrafted feel to it. Yeah, and this is something that, you know, with all tattoo art, like everyone, you make your choices, and there's so many different appeals. And, you know, so and he, he as well appreciates that kind of work. So,、uh, he, in closing, he just wants to say with Tabori, like, because with, you, with your hands, you have to control the angle, the depth,、uh, you know,、um, the speed, and,、uh, and the intervals of the tattooing. So, like, really, like, the machine is, there's no machine to like, regulate that. You know, it's not like a traditional thing where you can turn it to eight volts or do this. You have to do all of that. And as well as adjust to different parts of the body and different client skin tones and types. So, in this day and age, like you know, there's extremely well made machines and、um, whatnot. So, there are some that feel that Tabori is obsolete, that it's not really necessary anymore,、um, that it takes too long to learn. But you know, for Horitomo, he feels it's, it's a very important thing and、um, you know, it's very important to him. d o c h i k o Okay. So, anyhow, he hopes in closing that,、um, you know, with this little talk, that maybe the appreciation for d e v o r i will be peaked a little more. And,、uh, oh, and thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir.、Uh, first of all, thank you very much to both the teams here today.、Uh, you and、uh, we are great to like to say it.、Uh, first time at an event like this, very appreciative.、Uh, my question is more general to the question of、uh, the culture of tattoos within our unit in Japan.、Uh, of course, we all know it's very unfortunate that there is a stigma surrounding the official element of the i t The question is do you believe that over time there is Chance that Japanese society can be reused、uh, this art form as something not to be ashamed of or to have stigma surrounding it, but rather to appreciate it for the broad art form that it is.、Uh, and if, if so, how, maybe an estimate on how long you think that this change will occur. まあ、まず、いろいろここに来てありがとうございます。で、そこから、まあ、日本でもちろん、そういう悪いニュアンスとか、すごい。悪く悪い目で入れ墨見てるでしょでそれが変わそういうことは変わる可能性はどうですかでもし変わるんだったらど何年かかりますかっていう感じ
まあ、そういう可能性はあると思うし、んあ,のあると思って、信じたい。うん、なので、もしあるとしたら、そうね、今の俺たちが死んで、えー、ど50年ぐらいしか変わるんじゃないかな。Well, he, see, he really does feel that, like, I mean, he wants to believe that it's going to change and it's, that it is changing. But that said, he felt that, like, when you ask for a time period, he's like, well, maybe like 50 years after we're dead. It might be. Mm. No, he was saying that, like, you know, like at our age, the people that are looking down on the tattooing, like, they're very, like, set in their ways and they're not going to change. And I mean, I mean, I, oh. Yeah, So, this is like kind of ironic, but、um, he was saying that, like, you know, like in Japan, like it's, it's pretty rare to see like tattoos on TV. Like, like, it's not like here with all the TV shows we have.、Um, And then when you see them in movies, a lot of times it's a certain type of movie and they're portrayed in a certain kind of way, you know, you know which don't get me wrong, like I, I'm, I'm sort of adding to what he's saying too, but like, you know, like I love Yakuza cinema, but you know, like there's a certain look they're going for. But what he was saying, like nowadays, and I think we're seeing this change worldwide, is that young people can go online now or go through social media. And he's saying it's kind of funny because he knows that he'll see like there's people, like younger people in Japan, but they'll see. Foreigners with full Japanese tattoos, and they'll be like, oh, well, that's cool, or that's pretty, or whatever. And kind of, you know, in a roundabout way, it's kind of coming back and going over the, you know? So, and, and so I think that's, that, that might be something there, you know? And even I, and, and I know, like,、um, just to add to what he's saying, like, that's the whole one. I mean, he, he draws Momo and cats because he, you know, he created this because he loves cats and he loves Japanese tattoos. But there is a, like a, a further mission statement. As he's hoping that he can take something as like cute and benign as a cat and non threatening and then introduce Japanese tattooing to people through that. you know, So I think if you look at all this stuff, it's like it's all very heavy in tattoo symbolism. you know, And it's like he's hoping that through something as innocuous as a, a cat, he can like introduce a larger public. And in a lot of ways, he feels that because he lives out here, that hopefully maybe he can make enough noise to where they hear him back home. And also, too, thanks for coming out, all of you, seriously. Like,